We are at John Elway Stadium in Granada Hills, California, tonight for El Camino Real High School football. On the road, ECR faces a very talented Granada Hills Highlander team. Hello, everybody. My name is Randy Rosenblum, set to call the play-by-play. -play. ECR is 0-4, but they think tonight they have a shot. They came close a week ago against Chancellor, losing by two. Jason Zabalik is confident that his team can perform well. On the other side, Bucky Brooks has a talented football team at Granada Hills. They're one and one on the field, although they had to forfeit the one win over Cleveland because they used an eligible player. But they are very good, and they gave powerful Birmingham a tough game a week ago. Once again, we have a student working with us. That's a former great player at El Camino Real in baseball. At least he was last week. That's what he was telling me. He's always on the baseball team. It's Ryan Gilder. Ryan, your thoughts on this one? ECR is going to have to stop the run because Granada's great running the football. Yes, Granada Hills has a very good running game, and if El Camino has a chance to win this game, got to be able to stop the run. And they also have to throw the football. We know that Ryan Feinberg's the quarterback, but he's found a great target in Ben Montag, who was terrific against Shadsworth. Yes, Ben Montag got two touchdowns last week, and he did a great job with the ball, running the ball with good agility, good shifting throughout the entire game. On the other side, remember number one, Dejon Stanley. He's a running back, both games over 100 yards against Cleveland and Birmingham. He is very talented. Yes, Dejon Stanley, he's gone over 100 yards in multiple games this year, and he could possibly do it again tonight. And if El Camino has a chance to win, they've got to be able to hold him under 100. It's ECR in Granada Hills. We'll come back with the kickoff in just a moment on LA 36. And Montag coming to the near side. Ben Montag out to the 37-yard line. Ben Montag, very shifty, but it looked like Granada was ready for that one. Clearly from the last couple games, they've run it with Montag every game, and Granada was ready for that jet sweep to the side. We mentioned Ben on the pregame. He had a wonderful game against Chatsworth with the two touchdowns. ECR lost a week ago, 21-19 to the Chancellors. Granada Hills lost a hard-fought battle against an outstanding Birmingham squad. First minute of action here at John Elway Stadium. Ermita across the 40-yard line. Good quality run there by Ermita on a second down, making it third and really short. And now they have a decision between running and passing, and they could do either right now. Chad Hexamer with the tackle. There's Colin Ermita. Utilized in the backfield, had a long scamper for a touchdown a week ago against Chatsworth. That was one of the good things about El Camino's performance against the Chancellors. They're able to showcase some big plays. Feinberg out of the gun, Ryan Feinberg. Beautiful pictures tonight from John Elway Stadium. Ermita has running room into Granada Hills territory. Really good job there by Ermita using the good lead block there by William Gane and got an easy 20 yard run right there. Now we see Ermita here. Look at the big block there by Gane and then takes it to the outside. Nice start to the drive for Elko. Inside the Highlander 45-yard line. He'll stay on the ground with Armida. And another good gain on first down. Great job by Armida. They ran the same play as they did last time because it worked. And it's a good first down run for about seven yards. Well, a little bit of their own medicine. ECR running the football. We expect Granada Hills with their wing T offense, that double wing alignment to run the football effectively as well when the Highlanders, Bucky Brooks team, gets the football. Second down and three. A steady dose of Ermita. It's 
So that one's just back to the line there, but good job equaling out the run game. So you could throw the ball at Feinberg here to basically anyone, and you could run the ball here still on a third down and short. First two minutes of action here at John Elway Stadium. See if Feinberg at some point elects to go up top. But so far, he's put the ball into the hands of Colin Ermita. Sikowski goes in motion. Bueno. A physical, punishing running back has a first down. Beautiful run by Bueno. Bueno's definitely the power back of the team. Third down and short. That's the go-to guy, and he has got them the first down. Finally hit of the secondary by Daniel Sammy. ECR would love to get the lead on the road. They fell behind to Chatsworth and were chasing all last week. But they're an improving football team and under head coach Jason Zabalik. Inside of nine minutes to play opening quarter. And again today handed off to the burly running back Robin Bueno, the bruiser. And that time he got tagged right around the line of scrimmage. That one, Bueno didn't look like he had any room to run, and he took it for a two-yard gain. So good job for Bueno gaining some yards there when it looked like there was none. Trent Ramadan comes into that offensive set. He'll play on the flanks, an eligible wide receiver for Elko. Second down and 10. Feinberg to the air. Incomplete. Montag into and out of his hands. Montag right there was running right before he caught the ball. Main thing that you got to do is catch the ball, then run, and it just slipped right out of his hand. That was set up. He had blockers in front of him. But the ball was dropped. And Montag is normally very reliable. Montag's one of the most reliable players on the team, and especially last week, got El Camino a very good chance of winning the game with some big reception. Feinberg will operate out of the gun on third down and 10. The deep ball, knocked away. Intended for Ramadan. Excellent secondary coverage from Granada Hills. Ryan Feinberg with the third down and deep, wanting to go fly route over there. Just a little bit too high of a ball for Granada to be able to defend the way. Fourth down and 10. Ball resting at the 32-yard line of the Highlanders. Elko will go for it. D is wide to the right. Ramadan deployed to the left. Diaz, he needs 10 yards. He's not going to get the first down. Granada Hills has held, and the ball will go over on downs. Not a bad play there by El Camino. They're using their strength of the, of the screen game, and they wanted to get it and try to go as far as they can. And making Granada start with the ball on the 27 is just like off of a punt. So good job there by El Camino. They get a good quality first drive. It was game. a quality drive, but you do want to score. That's the name of the game. And it has to be a little bit frustrating that they're not able to take it all the way in and get points. But for Granada Hills, look at how they line up with those wing backs. Everybody's in tight. They have two terrific running backs. One of them we talked about on the pregame. Dejan Stanley, and this is Stanley getting to the outside, and there he goes. Stanley is gone. He's going to score a touchdown. 6 nothing, Granada Hills. That didn't take long. That didn't take long at all, Randy. You got Dijon Stanley, who's a man amongst boys tonight. You can see clearly on that first play, he is faster, taller, and stronger than everyone else on the field. It really showed right there. That is first two games, both over 100 yards as a Highlander. Just a young player, a sophomore, always smiling. Great disposition. And he flashed that amazing speed. They don't kick. They always go for two. Bucky Brooks believes in trying to maximize these point opportunities. The pitch back, 
And it's going to be taken in for two points. That's the other Sterling running back, Sam Adaduro. And it's 8 nothing Granada Hills. You can't get any better of a drive for that for Granada Hills in the playbook. They're a running team. They run a big touchdown, and then they get the two-point conversion. Can't do any better than that. And also, Dijon Stanley, really good job on that first run, faster than everyone else on the field, and uses speed to get out to the corner. Yeah, Stanley did look terrific once he got to the perimeter. And the Highlanders will kick off. One play drive. Better than a 70-yard run. Astons to kick off. The junior kicker. The young man that works out religiously. Comes out early. Always kicking the football. Number 88 will kick it away. Pooches it to the far side. And it's fair caught. And Elko will start from outside its 30-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown for Dijon Stanley. Now Dijon Stanley here takes the pitch to the right side, has a good opening, but really uses his speed to get to the outside. And then after the first, after the first place, he's gone. Dijon Stanley, really good run there. Got a, a great touchdown. block from his quarterback, Michael Hernandez, number 12, who's really bought into the offense, really embraces the kind of attack they utilize. And he did a nice job leading the way for Stanley, who was really untouched on that pitch out. 8 nothing. Granada Hills, 7-11 left. Opening quarter. Ball's on the ground. Not a clean exchange. Elko recovers, but they're behind the chains. It'll be second and long. Good thing is Zamrita got it. There's not a lot of positives in that play, but the only positive is that you're going to have the ball still. Two of the key players who will do the damage tonight. A rapidly moving opening quarter. Elko's had the ball really the entire quarter. Granada Hills one play and a 73-yard touchdown dash by Stanley. Second down, 13. Feinberg's pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Terrific penetration and breaking it up was Andre Anjamin. Ajamin does a great job there because that's an easy first down. Ben Montag on a one-on-one -on -one coverage is never a favorable matchup to the defense. And that deflection really just stopped the first down. Third down and long. 6-18 to play. Opening quarter here at John Elway Stadium. With Ryan Gilder, I'm Randy Rosenblum. A little bit later, Luke Slater will join us. He'll do the commentary with us in the second half. Of course, both Luke and Ryan are students at ECR, studying journalism, broadcasting. We're thrilled that they're helping us out on our telecast of El Camino Real football this year on LA 36. Feinberg in a moving pocket for Montag. Just missed him. Outstanding secondary coverage from Jonathan Herrera who's been getting better each and every week and is a very confident cornerback for Granada Hills. Good job there by Ryan Feinberg, at least being able to sense the blitz. He read the blitz before the play, did a good job rolling out, and Montag was tightly covered. Here we're going to go. See Feinberg, he reads the blitz right away, does a good job rolling out. Feinberg, deep, that's a hard throw to make, and just over his hands. Very hard throw to make at the high school level or at any level in general. Asa Johnson called upon to punt on fourth and long. Dijon Stanley is back deep at his 30-yard line. Flags are out. Our lead official tonight is Bill Agobian. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Bill's working with Paul Redorte, Michael Lipton, Logan Hartley, and Brandon Sampson. That's our officiating crew. 
by Snap. Johnson gets it away, a line drive kick. Stanley will watch it roll, and it's a terrific kick by Johnson. His best kick of the year. Great job there by Asa Johnson to get it on a line drive kick that's not returnable by Stanley, and it rolls all the way down to the 13-yard line, which is an excellent kick. That's a huge kick for El Camino and can shift the momentum towards El Camino. Also, Granada did a good job there on an offside. I never like penalties, but on 4th and 15, you can be a little bit more aggressive on the special teams. Islanders again, a one-play touchdown drive. The long run by Stanley. Stanley's a sophomore, 5'10", 175-pounder. Transfer from Grace Brethren. They pitch it back, and it's at a Duro, and he's stalled. Couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Coming through was Marcelo Assan, the linebacker, to make the stop, the senior. Good job by Assan, continuing the momentum that Asa Johnson gave them by getting a good tackle to keep it second down and 10. You mentioned that Marcelo is a senior. It is senior night here at Granada Hills. We will uh, recognize those seniors that are playing for the Highlanders a little bit later in our telecast. Fans are not in attendance. So it's a little bit different senior night, but it is their final appearance at John Elway Stadium. This is Stanley again. Turning it upfield, identical to the first play. There he goes. Stanley is in the end zone. He's got over 150 yards in this opening quarter. <laughs> Dijon Stanley already gets uh, over 100 yards in the first quarter. Before the game, I said that El Camino needs to hold Dijon Stanley under 100 yards, have a good chance to win the game, and having them get over 100 in the first quarter doesn't help their chances at all. How about two carries, two long touchdown runs for Dejon Stanley. He has been spectacular. You don't see running backs have that kind of start very often. They go for two, as they always do, and it's that same try with Adaduro, and he is stalled, does not get there. That's terrific work by Elko's Marcelo Asan. Let's go back to the second touchdown of Dijon Stanley. Looks very much like the first one. It looks identical to the first one. Good job by Stanley going up the middle, then taking it to the outside, reading the defenders, and just going to the outside hash line, and that gets you all the way to the end zone of his speed. Again, once he turns the corner with those long strides, kind of reminds you of Eric Dickerson with that upright running style. Gotta love the upright running style, but also he looks like men amongst boys. He is bigger, stronger, faster, and he shows it on every single play. A quick 14-0 lead for the men in green. Of course, uh, just by nature, you hear the stadium, John Elway Stadium. Obviously, John Elway played here. He was here the day they named the stadium after him. He came back for the naming rights. It was a great moment for John Elway as Astons will kick off. One of the great prominent alumni of the Highlanders, and he's helped out. He's uh, written a check for new helmets and shoulder pads for this year's group. So a shout-out to John Elway, who is supporting his alma mater. Another short kick, pretty good field position for ECR on a cold night in Granada Hills West Valley League game. Granada Hills highly regarded even though they're 0-2 on paper. Remember they won one of those games. An eligible player they had to forfeit the victory over Cleveland but they are ranked sixth in the Los Angeles City section poll. So this is a very good Granada Hills team and a, quite a test for Elko. Not a lot of teams run the ball like how Granada Hills runs the ball and the only reason why they're six is because their defense isn't as good as their offense. But six is a very good ranking with a really good running back to John Stanley. And like Elko, not a lot of seniors on this Granada Hills team. They're going to build quite a program here. Feinberg looked up, wanted to throw it. Then he tucks and goes and picks up about four yards. The quarterback of Elko, Ryan Feinberg. Ryan Feinberg looked at his receiver, didn't have an open slot so he decided to run the ball get some good quality yards on first down and 10. Speaking of quality he's a quality runner with the football isn't it? Yeah see every game you already know if he can't throw the ball he's gonna be able to run the ball in the game. 
Second down, six. Four and a half minutes left. Opening quarter, 14-0 Highlander. They've had success on the ground. And another substantial run. Bueno driving through for big yardage. Robin Bueno noted for short yardage, but the sophomore there picked up a large chunk. He's a power back, so he's going to power through wherever he needs to. When it's third down and short, he's going to power through short. But when it's second and deep, he's going to run through deep. He's going to run right through anyone. He got a first down right there. Good job by Robin Bueno. Figures to be a very quick game with both teams running. Not a whole lot of passing. Inside of four minutes left of this quarter, the opening quarter, and Bueno off of right tackle doesn't go very far. Bueno, even though it didn't go that far, that... That should have been at the line of scrimmage, and he took that for two to three yards. So that's a good job by Bueno making yards out of nothing there. Second down and nine. Well, Elko's moved the ball on the ground. Had a nice drive to begin the game. It stalled inside the 30-yard line of Granada Hills Charter High School. And then Stanley took off and he has been dominant in this first quarter. Bueno on a quick handoff up the middle, down to the 36-yard line. So Elko is having success between the tackles. El Camilo needs to keep on running the ball, just like how they've been doing, because what stole last drive with a couple missed passes, continue what's working. Bueno and Arnita on the ground is what's gained El Camino first downs. They should continue doing this. And ECR's offensive line doing a nice job. Moving them out of there, giving uh, those running backs an opportunity. Third down and a short three. Four down territory for ECR. Feinberg. Breaks one tackle, he's not going to get there. Islanders do a nice job defensively. Miles White, the defensive lineman, the junior. This is an inside blitz, all out blitz in the middle. And Feinberg has a quarterback draw with that play. So that's going to be a hard two yard run for any quarterback to get. And he couldn't get the first down there. Yeah, Miles White is a tone setter. One of the leaders on offense and just made a big play on defense. Fourth down, still three to go. Bueno up the middle. Driving forward, he's got a first down. Great job, Bueno getting the first down. And again, William Gane on the lead block as the tight end to give room to Bueno to get the first down. So Elko's moved the football. Let's see if they can finish the drive. We mentioned they stalled the first time, and then Granada Hill scored. The way the Highlanders are scoring with Stanley, ECR needs points. Yes, you need points, and you need to be able to have a good job controlling the football throughout the game because Granada is getting touchdowns every single play. So you need to have a good job getting the offense off the field for Granada. First and 10 for the men from Woodland Hills. Feinberg wants to pass. Overshoots Ben Montag. Feinberg was feeling the pressure. They were blitzing, and Granada Hills loves to blitz. Marcus Escarton was coming through and put the heat on Ryan Feinberg. Feeling the pressure there. You know that you cannot turn over the ball because Granada Hills' offense is on fire right now. So Feinberg there should have thrown the ball away. He got an incompletion, but that thing could have been picked. Second down and 10. Back to the ground. Bueno lowering the shoulder. Good contact there. A couple eights running into each other. Giovanni Korn, the junior, made the stop. That was quite a collision. Good tone setting run by Bueno lowering the shoulder. Low man wins, and he got lower right there and got some extra yards because of it. Third down and six. Final 30 seconds of the opening quarter. As you can see, Granada Hills Charter leads 14-0. With Ryan Gilder and Luke Slater, I'm Randy Rosenblum. 
Great pictures from our LA 36 crew tonight. Emanating from Granada Hills High School. And they keep it on the ground. And Bueno pounding away. Good quality run again by Bueno to end the first quarter. That's the end of the opening quarter. It'll be a fourth down and two when we resume. 14-0 in favor of Granada Hills Charter over ECR. be looking a big fourth down to begin the second quarter. The offense had success running the football, and they're going to need to pick up this game here. you got to think they're going to go back to Bueno, who's been outstanding so far. Yeah, bueno and Armida doing a great job pounding the rock tonight. They just got to keep on moving the chains until they get a score. And for the defense, they should focus everything on stopping Stanley and if they give up a five to eight yard run to anyone else, that's okay. You gotta stop Stanley because he has two rushes for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. About over 150 yards. He's closing in on 160. He's right about 157 yards by my calculations. That, that's pretty big. And also, Stanley can get over 300 yards in the first half. So that's pretty crazy for a running back in the high school level. Fourth down and a couple. Will Bueno carry the football? ECR desperately needs to pick up the first down. They don't want to turn it over on downs. It's Ermita going wide. First down yardage for Holland Ermita. Able to get outside. That's a good job again by that offensive front paving the way. Miles White again with the tackle. Great job, I would say, by Ryan Feinberg right there. Waiting, 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 because he knows that there's going to be a blitz by the defense. He wants to keep the defense on their heels while he hands the ball off to Ramita to get room to get to the outside right there. Bueno checks back in, replacing Ramita. All that Ramita did his job, gets his helmet slapped as he comes to the sideline. Coaching staff pleased with that effort. 11.40 left, opening half. Nothing there. At the point of attack, Miles White just filled the gap and dropped Bueno in his tracks. Miles White is an impressive football player, 52 in the green and white. Great job by Miles White filling in his gap and getting the job done. Granada Hills has been giving up a lot of yards on the rush tonight. Good job by him to stop it. Time of possession is one-sided. Elko's controlled the football the whole night. But as you can see on the scoreboard, it hasn't paid off. Not to this point yet, anyway. Overcast skies looming here in Granada Hills. Wind is kicking up. Panoramic view from our goalpost cam, and you can see those clouds. Again, up the middle in a short gain. It's going to bring up a third down play. Bueno, the workhorse. And he was rocked that time, hit hard in the middle of that front. Granada Hills focusing the blitz on the middle, and they just stopped Bueno and Armida two times in a row. Now El Camino has a decision, either run outside, run inside, or pass the ball outside. That's how they've been doing it all season. That's how they're probably going to do it on this drive. Third down and nine. Feinberg figures to go up top. Diaz is split wide to the right. They will run it. They go between the tackles. Trying to keep that uh, Granada Hills defense off balance. It was Ermita that ran it, but he didn't go anywhere. Very active Andre Anjamian with the stop. 
the Granada Hills defense was unfazed by that run. They knew it was coming. Now, on fourth down, looks like we're going to have a field goal here by Asa Johnson. Bases on. Bueno will hold. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Ace has got the leg to get it there. Plenty of distance. It is good. A 37-yard field goal by Asa Johnson. And ECR is on the board, carving the deficit to 14-3 for the Highlander. Great kick there by Asa Johnson with some wind also, with some distance with 37 yards with the wind. Good job there by Asa Johnson to get El Camino on the board. Asa showcased a very strong leg. Strong leg kick right here, 37 yards. You can see up top of some trees movement that there's a win. And that had plenty of distance. That could have gone easily 10 more yards over that. Good job there by Asa Johnson. Now he gets to kick it off. Well, the good news he gets to kick off. The bad news is Dijon Stanley will return it along with Cooper Brown. Two speedsters. Two young men fleet of foot that are very dangerous on the specialty unit. Asa Johnson's a very smart kicker, and I think he'll try to keep it away from them. Well, you don't want to kick it to Stanley, that's for sure. 14 to three, Granada Hills. He kicks it to Cooper Brown. And again, Cooper's got great speed and he's out to the 35 yard line. Great burst there by Cooper Brown. Got all the way to the 35. That's where they would have gotten if the kick went out of bounds. Highlander's key players, you've already seen Stanley. Brown just touched. Sam's brought it in from the two-yard line on the extra point. Hernandez, the quarterback, has thrown a good block. Herrera's made some nice plays defensively. And the other Sam has been doing some good things on defense. Sam Biles. First and ten Highlanders. There's number one who has been number one here at Granada Hills this year. He is the man. Hernandez, the quarterback, keeping it. That did not fool ECR. Run out of bounds by Caden Sikowski. Great job there by Sikowski making the correct read that the quarterback had the ball to end and just forced the second down and really long. ECR probably relieved that Stanley didn't carry it. And Granada Hills not electing to throw the football. They've had great success on the ground with number one. They start up in motion, and they counter the other way. And a Duro running hard, high stepping it as he goes across the 50 into El Camino Real territory. What a great run by Sam Adaduro. Great job by Adaduro right there. Had plenty of time to get that first down a lot of the defense didn't give him low tackles so he was able just to run right over them tempo picks up they pitch it back to stanley dejan stanley again another huge chunk so tough to tackle finally dragged down by antonio diaz another great run there by stanley on the inside ran right through everyone and got a big game Having a huge opening half. They swing it back the other way to Sam Adaduro. And he's loose. He lost the ball. Or he may have scored the touchdown. Smartly went back and fell on the pigskin. Adaduro got loose there and then the football got loose after. Stanley looking for his third score of the night. 
inside the 10-yard line. Great job by Hassan there to stop Stanley for the second time tonight. They slowed him down, but he still picked up nearly five yards. Stanley dropped it, picked it up, lost it again. Elko has it. El Camino Rael forces the turnover. Jacob Zane recovered it. Jacob Zane, brother of former linebacker Adam Zane for El Camino. Good job getting that loose ball right there. Just off the fingertips there from Stanley. He tried to get it up, but then he fumbled it again and picked up by Zane. Good job getting low by Zane to get El Camino the ball back and giving them the momentum. ECR has not forced a lot of turnovers this year. Got a couple against Brentwood in a heartbreaking loss, but they get one here. We'll have a long field with Feinberg and company. Content to run the football. And it was Ermita. Colin Ermita rapidly improving to running back the transfer from Crespi High School. El Camino did a great job last drive establishing the run. They're trying to do it again this drive, but Granada's ready for it inside and outside. Down to 6.45 left in the opening half, 14-3. Granada Hills Charter leading in this West Valley League football game. Second down and nine. Feinberg loves to operate out of the shotgun. High snap, but he fields it cleanly. No place for Ermita to go. He's handled and thrown down for a loss. Ajemian again. On inside zone plays, timing is key. And with a high snap, it ruins the timing for Armida to get a good gain on that one. Jamian and White have been outstanding defensively so far for Granada Hills. Third down and nine. And if Elko doesn't convert here, Granada Hills figures to get terrific field position. Five and a half minutes left. Opening half. West Valley League rivals. Fly sweep. It's Montag. And he does not turn it upfield. That's great defense by the Highlanders. Terrific job. Cooper Brown came up in red run. Great job by Cooper Brown staying in his zone. He knows he has the flat. And then with the jet sweep there to Montag, Cooper does his job and tackles Montag. And the Highlanders' defense, they do their job. Asa Johnson summoned in to punt. Stanley will drift back. He'll be returning the punt. And you know he's always a threat. Always a threat. Always think about getting away so that Stanley doesn't have to return this. Dejan Stanley right at the 50-yard line waiting for this kick. Kick away from him and out of bounds, but the Highlanders are going to be inside the El Camino 40-yard line. Great kick there by Asa Johnson. I'd rather have the ball at the 40-yard line than gain the ball to Cassius Stanley because he's taken two home already. Well, Cassius Stanley? Oh, my goodness. I just said you just gave away your basketball knowledge. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, but he did Stanley. play for Sierra Canyon, yes, and he, he was great. Now he's in the NBA, was in the NBA dunk contest. That's a good throw out, though. That's a, that's, a, that's a good line there for Cassius Stanley. Yes, I mixed up the Stanleys on that one. I don't know. I didn't ask. And, and I talked to Dejan. I wonder if he's related to Cassius. I don't know, Randy, but what I, I think of professional athletes, I think of Cassius Stanley and 
Dejon Stanley is playing like a professional athlete tonight. Well, they place the ball right at the 40-yard line. Let's see what the Highlanders can do. They have four minutes and 26 seconds left in the opening half, and boy, hasn't it gone by quickly. They go back to Adaduro, and he cuts it upfield. And a good run by Sam Adaduro. That's a big hit again by Marcelo Hassan. Absolutely got a good job there on getting the head lowered, but not to the point where it's head on head contact, but where it's shoulder. See Adaduro with the ball, finds his hole, gets it, but Hassan does a great job filling and gets a good quality tackle and almost got the football jar loose too. Elko's hitting on defense. Second down, seven. Stanley cutting up field. Boy, he has cat quick feet. He's a very elusive running back. Dejan Stanley. Dejan Stanley has great feet to get to the outside, can shift to the inside, and really quick and go really fast. At 132 yards and two touchdowns in the loss against Birmingham a week ago. He's exceeded the yardage, and he has two scores already here in the opening half. And he has the ball again. Stanley looking for a block. Outside, turns the corner, first down yardage, and a late flag. Tough to stop Stanley. After the very rough, this defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Great run there by Stanley, and now they're in field position to get a touchdown in the red zone. That's Bill Agopian, our veteran official. Does a terrific job in the LA City section. That's, uh, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna add on like that it's tough enough to stop granada hills now elko has given him additional yardage on the personal foul the ball just outside the 11 yard line so the highlanders can get a first down without a touchdown they pitch it back again at a duro not a whole lot there I'll tell you, Jacob Zane's having a nice ball game for ECR, number 37. Got down low and knocked down the ball carrier. Jacob Zane and Marcelo Hassan, the linebackers, are going to be pivotal to El Camino's success tonight on the run game because a lot of the line, a lot of the offensive lines going to be covering all the defensive linemen, so the linebackers have to come in and pinch. Second down and 10. 235 left, opening half. Stanley running right. Cutting it upfield, dives toward the end zone. Looks like he scored another touchdown. Dejan Stanley. Getting the congratulations on the far side. Eric Chi, the running back. Going for the two points. Didn't get there. So Chi gave it a good effort, but just couldn't quite get it in the end zone. So after Stanley's third rushing touchdown, the lead builds to 20 to three. What a first half for Dejan Stanley of Granada Hills. Three first-half touchdowns, and he's closing in on 200 yards. Dejon Stanley showing off his power game right here. Makes one cut and runs right through everyone to get all the way to the end zone in big reach. There he goes. Touchdown, Dejon Stanley. They never signal touchdown on the field. It doesn't matter. He got in. Granada Hills has built a 20-3 lead. Islanders 
to kick off. They've had great success in this first half, controlling the line of scrimmage when they've been running. And Elko on their behalf, they've uh, run the ball effectively. They just haven't paid off their drives. Short kick to the sideline is out of bounds. Elko will get good field position. Granada Hills on that kick weren't thinking about if El Camino is going to catch it or not. By the kicking team. He knew that if he kicks it out of bounds, it will go exactly to where the fair catch would have been at around the 35. El Camino Real has two and a half minutes to try to move it down the field. Try to get uh, a touchdown and get back into this game. Down by 17. Only a few fans here. I would imagine they're family members. We're not allowing fans in here at Granada Hills. By the way, they're going to start basketball practice going indoors next week. The Southern Section teams like Damien have played 16 games already in the Southern Section. The city schools will get started next week practicing. Birmingham, which is a charter school like El Camino Real and Granada Hills, has been playing basketball games. In fact, they've won two out of three starts against Southern Section opponents. Feinberg to the air has Diaz near side. Antonio Diaz breaking tackles and a terrific effort by Diaz. Oh, that was marvelous work by the sophomore. Good adjustment there by El Camino. They expected Chatsurf to expect the run, and they did. Feinberg to Diaz to get a good first down catch. Let's take another look at this 11-yard hookup. Antonio Diaz has been a feature receiver this year for El Camino. A little catch and run on the outside with the defensive back playing back, and good first down run shakes off one defender. Feinberg with a great throw there with Miles White right in his face. Ball's on the ground. Granada Hills has it. You cannot turn the football over, and that's exactly what happened there. And now the Highlanders with better than two minutes left in the half. They'll have another opportunity. Can't turn over the ball right there. 20 to 3. Now we're going to see the lost ball. Quarterback Feinberg gets the ball, hands it off, and never really gets the ball handed off. It just drops it to the ground almost, and Granada got the ball from that. Yeah, Tommy Takahashi really took a hit there, and the ball did go on the ground. Here's Stanley again. Dejon Stanley, every time he touches it, you just hold your breath. Dejon Stanley, every single handoff, you're on the edge of your seat to see how far he'll go. Good job there for El Camino to contain Stanley, but still, that's a good five-yard run for Stanley. Inside of two minutes left opening half. You love the patience of this Granada Hills offense. Even though there's under two minutes, they're content to run it. Adaduro is turned around and has no chance. Terrific penetration by ECR, that defense got through and it was Vladimir Derbeshian with the tackle. Great penetration there by the defensive line to not let Granada develop their run play at all to make it third and long. Clock is running as you can see, down to a minute 20 left. Stanley giving ground and he's thrown down. What a terrific defensive play by Elko. El Camino making some adjustments here, penetrating the line early so that the run play cannot develop for Granada. Now we're going to see it right here. Great penetration by El Camino so the run plays can't develop. Even if they want to go outside to the jet sweep, you can't get there because of the penetration by the defensive line of El Camino. What an effort by Trent Ramadan to get Stanley down. He just grabbed that jersey, that shoulder pad, and dragged him down. Well, Elko believes they're going to 
get another shot here on fourth down. They believe Granada will punt it, so Jason Zabalik smartly takes the timeout with 45 seconds left in the half. Trying to get that offense on the field. He knows he's got a good field goal kicker, so he can move it down the field and get Asa Johnson in position to kick it. He's already booted a 37-yard field goal in this opening half. Of course, the 41-year-old Jason Zabalik in his first year as the head coach at El Camino, his alma mater. And like Bucky Brooks, very proud to be a head coach. Bucky Brooks on the other side. Kind of a media star. He's on Fox at the NFL Network as an analyst. But I asked him, what about high school football? Why are you coaching? Well, his dad was a coach in Carolina. He went to North Carolina. That's where he started before Bucky played in the NFL. And he just loves the prep game. And he said, Randy, as long as Granada Hills will have me, I will stay here. Even with my media responsibilities, I will coach the Highlanders. Two very successful head coaches. The punt is away. And it'll roll inside the ECR 20. In fact, it's going to roll all the way down to the 15. At halftime tonight, we'll uh, have an excerpt from the SoCal Prep Report. Jason Zabalik was featured in that program last night. We'll be thrilled to show you that at intermission. Well, it's going to be a longer field here. We'll see how El Camino Real plays it. We saw him last week in a similar situation. Ryan, throw the football. Yes, Ryan threw the football. And the main target here is Ben Montag. He could really stretch the field and flip it from the ECR 10 to the Granada Hills 10 in a second. Fine Berg will work out of the gun. Got to be careful here. You don't want to turn it over. Temperature dropping. It figures to get down about 50 degrees tonight. Feinberg over the middle, incomplete. And there's a hit and an illegal hit in the secondary. One of the uncle players who took that hit is down. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. That'll give ECR the first down. They attend to the player that is injured for Elko. And we'll step out and be back in a moment. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Check the number of the player that's down for Elko. They're attending to him. They have trainers around him. City section top ten. This is the Sportsbook Live top ten. Birmingham ranked number one, two and two. Followed by San Pedro and Banning. They're playing tonight. Venice, Reseda, Granada Hills. You can see number six. They're one and one on the field. Remember, they had a forfeited game because of an ineligible player. Carson, Canoga Park, Garfield, the Bulldogs under Lorenzo Hernandez and Palisades. Palisades' one loss was their opener to Venice. That's uh, why they have a setback to those strong gondoliers. And Venice has a great quarterback in Sam Walton. So the player that was shaken up has come off the field for ECR, which is a good sign. I believe it was Zy Miranda. And he is okay. 30-yard line. 27 seconds left. The penalty uh, gives him a little bit better field position. Feinberg stepping up in the pocket, and he's going to get thrown down and loses 
five yards. Again, the blitzing football team from Granada Hills and busting through was Kyle Chano. The marker out. We'll get the call after they huddle. Those officials are going to work. We'll check out the marker. And Bill Agopian will give us the call. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Couple of those on this drive against the Highlanders. So it looks like Granada Hill is going to be gifting El Camino a lot of yards here in the end of the first half. Feinberg wants to go and run the ball and takes a hit, and that's going to horse collar around him, and that's a penalty. And then the late hit there is probably what caused it. That takes it out to the 40-yard line, gives ECR the first down. But they're fighting the clock, which is running for whatever reason. And they finally stop it at 12 seconds. Elko's going to ask for more time, I would imagine. That clock was incorrect, so we're going to have a stoppage. Some home cooking on that scoreboard operator. Trying to run the clock out. Get the Highlanders defense off the field. When I looked up, there was about 21 seconds left. We'll see how much time they put back on the clock. It shows just 12 seconds here at John Elway Stadium. There it is. But that is not correct. They're going to go to 20 seconds. So we'll go to 2 0. That's good officiating by the crew. Feinberg rolling left. Nearly intercepted. Ryan Feinberg there needs to get that ball thrown towards the sideline so that either the receiver catches it or nobody catches it so he doesn't turn over the ball there. Lucky to get that one back. Very lucky indeed. Kind of odd to come into John Elway Stadium and not have fans. Usually they have good attendance here. Well-supported team locally. Elko and Granada would have had a big crowd. Well-supported team locally and also over 5,000 kids in the school. So there's a lot of kids that come to the football games. Very exciting environment at, a, at Granada Hills. Feinberg again taking off. And he's caught from behind. Another flag is out with just eight seconds remaining in the half. Flag was behind the play. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Step off the yardage. You got to take a shot here, I would imagine. You know, it's it's the instincts that take over if you're Ryan Feinberg and you get in that pocket and you want to run, but they need a big play. They need a big play. Eight seconds left. You've got to go to someone that could stretch the field here. Yeah, and again, timeout, El Camino Real. Yep, they saw the Second clock running the down. So the clock started to run. So there's five seconds left. We'll come back for the waning seconds of the first half in just a moment. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm going to drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely going to call a ride home.
seconds left. They got to make something happen on this down. On this down, they need to get a touchdown or they're not going to have enough time to do any other plays. The deep throw for Montag, and it's behind him and out of bounds. Excellent coverage from Cooper Brown. One second remaining, as you can see. So Elko has one more shot. Good job by Feinberg there to at least give themselves an extra down here. They have one more second to do something with it. It could be to get another deep shot. It could be just to send it to halftime, but good job there to get an extra down. And keep in mind of the second half, Luke Slater is going to join us. Do the commentary, take over for Ryan Gillard. Didn't Ryan and Luke do a nice job? We've had them on every week, and we're fond of their efforts and how they've progressed on the air. Great opportunity for these young students from El Camino Real, baseball players. Feinberg, final throw of the half is incomplete. Into and out of the hands of Marcelo Asan. We go into the locker room, and at the half, it's 20-3 to for Granada Hills. We'll have SoCal Prep Report featuring Jason Zabalik as our halftime show right after this. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She's been looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help and provided her help, she realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Let's go over to the city section talk to you, uh, Jason Sabalik, real quick. Jason, southern section's done. You guys still got two more games to go. We're the game of the week every week now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that, Coach. You know, it's, it, you know, it's odd times, and it's unfortunate that, you know, things are as they are, but you've got to make the best of it, and it looks like you guys are maxing it out. Well, we're going to do what we can to put the best product on the field moving forward and love every second of being a part of – this uh, SoCal prep relationship, this LA 36 relationship, and you know, get to do it for a long time coming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach, um, you guys play two more games. There's no playoffs for you guys, right? In the city section, there's, there's nothing like that. Correct. Yeah, no, no playoffs. Um, you know, every game, it's, a, uh, it's our bowl game. You know, next week we'll play our senior night at home. We'll get to honor our uh, seniors and, um, you know, kind of do a little bit of goodbye. This week we don't get any fans, which is great with the telecast. Um, and then we'll bring it home next week. You know, I hope you guys try to notice that I changed the scenery a little bit. I got my <laughs> friend Joe Poole over here, my right hand shoulder. Th uh, who's that guy? Go ahead. To, uh, it looks like that. Some way to get a win. It looks like Alfred E. Newman right He's there, man. Scary, he stick man. his finger in a light <laughs> socket, doesn't it? <laughs> that is great, Coach. We'll acknowledge anything you need to do to get a win, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Anything. That's no it. Bomb. We're going to plug away. You know, we got a lot of kids. We've got a lot of great heart. You know, these kids are putting up with such an unreal thing going on right now mentally as far as the pandemic goes. Getting out in the football field is phenomenal for them. It's been a game changer. I think it's taken a lot of these kids out of depression and put them back into normalcy. And uh, that's all we could have hoped for, you know. And at the end of the day, it's not about the results. It's not about the wins and the losses. It's about how can we affect these kids for the better of their livelihoods. Coach, how's this affecting, like, obviously you're not going to have spring ball this year, right? Too late. Well, we're actually three months behind uh, our spring ball schedule, and they actually just waived the dead period. I don't know if you guys have heard, but they waived the football dead period uh, for this year. And uh, we're going to give the kids about 10 days off, and we need to get in the weight room. They haven't, they haven't lifted weights for over a year and a half. Wow. And we need to put some strength on these young uh, pups. Yep, no doubt about it, man. 
That's the most important thing in the off season is to get your weights in, get your workout yep. in, get those bones bigger, those muscles bigger, because it's, it's a long season. And I don't care how young the kids are, it does wear you out by the time the season's over, especially if you play 14, 15 games like some, some, some schools do, you know. So where's well, you? I learned, you know, going back into that, that what you were just touching upon, I, I, I made it a, my kind of uh, mission to find how do you create leaders and you really create leadership in the off season. It's created in the weight room. It's created in the little things that you do off the field. It's created in the academics and the, the trained eye to discipline and watching film and being a student of the game and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm really looking forward to my first off season with my program. Hey, right. that's, that's great. Uh, what is, uh, I know that transition is going to be kind of quick. What are some of the plans for the, you know, besides the weight room and what are, what are you going to, how's that transaction, uh, transition going to go? How do you accelerate it? Yeah, how do you get going so fast? You know, first and foremost, it comes with a, uh, an entrance meeting. You know, the one thing that I missed out with my student athletes this year was the fact that I never got the chance to meet them in person face to face and have that conversation with them and really read between their eyes if football was, you know, their passion and talk to them about how important academics are. And, you know, we can only do so much virtually. You can only uh, instill so much discipline over Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And it really doesn't come into play when you actually have to get up in the morning and go and work out. So, you know, a lot of team bonding, a lot of time to get to know some of these kids, some of the kids that I still haven't even met in person because we're still at about a skeleton crew of about 60% of the population of the kids that we're actually coaching. And plus we don't get to see the JV team because we don't have enough field time. So at the end of the day, I, I, I'm more excited to kind of get to, into these kids' heads a little bit and you know start to impress upon them some of the important things moving forward. Yeah, I know the weight room is a great way to go and talk to some of these kids and talk about academics and getting them, getting them up and going. And uh, so that's a really great program. Stress busting. Oh, yeah. Right on. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bob, you sleeping there or what, man? No, I'm good, man. I'm listening to all this good conversation going on, man. These coaches I, are these coaches I figured you wanna, out wisdom, man. It's good to listen to. You were, you were talking a lot of trash about Davidson before the show. Why don't you tell him what you were saying to his face now, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Coach. And That's Coach cool. knows it. <laughs> this is good stuff. No, this, this, is, this is good stuff because, you know, when we have two, two coaches on here that really care – um, about their kids uh, just really beyond the football field. I think that's what we're seeing so much of you know, during this whole uh, trying time that everybody's gone through. Checking in on kids, making sure everybody's okay. Uh, of course, football's a priority, but, you know, academics and everything else, you know, mental health has been a big issue. So, you know, we, you know we've got coaches here that, that care about their kids, you know, and that's, that's, that, that's the kind of thing that lasts a lifetime. You know, you, you, everybody remembers those great coaches they have when they were kids. You know, they're really helping through things, and I, I think that's the that's the great part about high school sports. You know, and, and you know, looking at it from uh, from, from the wide view angle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Dan, let me ask you another question about uh, you know what's going on now. We we saw what, what Coach Sabalik said about how he's going to handle uh, his transitionary into quote unquote lack of spring ball. They've waived the dead period, all that. So where do you go from here? Your season's pretty much done. You're going to take a week or two off, and then uh, start back up again. Or are you getting back? into the situation on Monday, or are you already back at it? Well, to be honest, we are back at it. So I knew it. Did, How what, dare what you? What we did is we do homework club. So I pass out the calendar. We have 98 days before we come into what's called our, our season first practice. And if you count the calendar back, it's 100 days to get to that. So we, we counted everything. Uh, we do homework club on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's something that we are very proud of, of the way that we go it. We, are, we track the kids' weight and their protein and their hydration. We hand them the workout programs that they have to do, not only for lifting, but um, conditioning piece. And we have ideas what they want to do, you know, three cone drill, 40, vertical, um, standing broad, and, and things like that. So we pass, pass all that out. So these first two weeks, I say that they're off, but we're lifting. We're a homework club, and we're starting to track where they're at. They need their bodies to get back for a couple weeks. And so um, we're tracking where they're at right now and where they want to get to. So we have uh, books and pamphlets, and, we, and it's a tracking device. They come back in, they put them in, and, and we treat it that way. And basically on the top of the folder it says, uh, who do you want to be in 100 days? Because 100 days, it takes us to the 24th, 
of July, and that's when our season would start, and that's what would, that's our our motto. So right now we're trying to get all those missing assignments, getting the grade point averages set up. We work on camps. We did clearinghouse on Monday for most of our athletes, and then Tuesday we come down and do all these different camps that we put stuff out and we register the kids um, that way. So that's really what we we try to do. And um, we, we're again, I don't want to say that we focus everything on football. We just focus in more about character. And so guys love a coach to talk perfect. The kids love to be in the weight room. So kids well, like to lift weights. You know, and, you know, uh, teams that bond win. There's no question. Most teams that win championships have bonded very well. And I think all these things you do helps these kids bond. If you're having a homework club, um, you're having the workouts and they're personalized, so everybody has to show up. I mean, you know, they begin to bond that way. Uh, you talk about any... Go ahead. Rich you're, so, Rich, you're so right on because, you know, we're doing the protein and they come in, they get the shakes, they're messing around, they're having a good time, they're tracking the weights, yep. they create their groups on it. And I, I, every one of you guys are still involved in sports because it was so impactful for you when you were at this time. I know my best friends are still the guys that I played ball with. Oh, oh and, yeah. And so that so are some of my I'm worst. Gonna, yeah. And, that, and that's what we're trying to convince them, right? We're, we're we're trying to let them understand the values that are here. And the values come from all those weight room sessions and tracking and fighting and having those guys go with you. And, and you're, you're a different breed if you play football. It, let's, let's face it, it's, it's a, if it's a different animal that comes in and not everyone's been meant to play um, football. And uh, I'm just very proud of how the guys uh, want something and they attack it and they go about it. And, and it's, very, it's very important, I, you know, Today, I send out little motivational texts to my guys almost daily. Today's is success is on the other side of what you don't want to do. And so that was today's message. Nice. So you may not want to pay the price in the weight room or the grind or, or the homework or whatever it is, but the only way you get success is on the other side. So that's something that I'm very proud of. And, and, you know, and I know you guys know me. That's why I love coming on the show. It's because you guys are giving another avenue for these youth to have something to grab hold of. And that's why I'm on social media. That's why I follow you guys on social media, because it's another thing to keep these guys occupied to do something well and to keep great things happening in their lives. And that's why I'm so thankful for you guys and, and a part of these type of things at all times. Right. We appreciate you coming on, Dan. You know, we, we've uh, got to know your program quite well. And everything's just great over there so we really appreciate you know the fact that you do follow us get the word out um we have a great time doing this show um but just right now you and coach Sabalik up there right now just you know happen to be the lucky ones that um we're still playing and you know have a good relationship uh, out there with the media so kudos to you guys anyways hey uh coach Sabalik, why don't you real quick tell us about your game when is it and uh larry uh can you tell us uh, by the time he's done what what time and where they could see the game go ahead coach we play uh, Bucky Brooks and the Granada Hills Highlanders on Friday tomorrow at 7 p.m. You can check it out on uh, LA 36, live streamed. And uh, Larry can give you the better details than I. Yeah, Larry will be able to give you the dates when it goes over the air. Larry, you want to do that now or are you going to just let everybody hang? All right. Well, can you tell me? Uh, you can post it on a graphic. Hmm. 4 p.m. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and that's the replay, right? And, of course, it'll be live stream, so that's always good. And it's very important right now with nobody could come to the games hardly at all, and so you'll be able to watch it on TV, and that's going to be cool. All right, guys, that's about all the time we have for today. I'm going to let, uh, uh, I'll, I'll let Coach Sabalik have a parting shot, Coach Davidson, after him. Go, Coach. You know, I'd just like to thank you guys for the opportunity to be uh, on live you know, whatever you want to call it, social media, so to speak. And I, I really get to enjoy these Thursday nights. I'm starting to get used to it. So if you guys have an opening down the road or Randy decides to quit for some reason because he becomes, you know, rich and famous, I'd be happy to join the crew. Right on, Jason. I love that. Hey. And welcome back to John Elway Stadium. It's halftime. It's a 20 to three advantage for the host Granada Hills Highlanders over El Camino Real. Randy Rosenblum joined by Luke Slater. 
Luke's going to do the commentary in the second half. And like Ryan Gilder, a very fine baseball player on the ECR squad that always does well in baseball. But we're talking football right now. Luke, welcome in. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, that first half, it was all about Dejon Stanley, wasn't it? Yes, Dejon Stanley just absolutely dominated that first half for Granada Hills on the ground. Good, great runner as shown there. But El Camino defense stepped in. A lot of big rushes early on, but they were able to stuff him later on. He did come in uh, to the locker room with about 200 yards worth of real estate, so Stanley did have a very impressive first half, and he scored all three touchdowns. The score for ECR was an Asa Johnson field goal of 37 yards. That was good to see. Yeah, it was great to see, especially Asa Johnson getting that good field goal and especially the first field goal so far of the year, I think. Yeah, he's uh, kicked some long ones in practice, but to get one in a real game in a West Valley League showdown against a very good Granada Hills team is very nice for Asa Johnson. What is ECR going to have to do, Luke Slater, in the second half to try to fight their ways back into the game? Big thing for ECR is just to stop Stanley. That's all. You, that's all. If you're stopping Stanley, that is a big portion of that Granada offense, and you could get your offense back on the field and drive down and put up some points to come back in this game. Yeah, Dejan had two long bursts for touchdowns, one of 73, one of about 85. Here's the second one. Almost looked identical to the first, didn't it? Very much. Great blockers, uh, great blockers there from Granada able to set up and give him some space. And as soon as he gets into open field, it's hard to catch him. Again, he's got that upright style. And once he gets on the corner, he is gone. Look at the distance between him and the rest of the defense scoring easily. He did get a short touchdown as well in the half after this one to make it uh, a Hat trick, three touchdowns in the first half for Dejan Stanley. Uh, and they can build a program around him, and I think they will. And uh, Bucky Brooks has got something going, and he's got this guy too, Sam Adaduro. Now he lost the ball, and Sam had to go back and get it. But uh, Sam's quite an athlete as well. Adaduro definitely does. It's a great one-two punch from Granada Hills, especially both young. They're, they they could build a lot around that. And here's the one that got away from Stanley, and this was recovered by ECR. Jacob Zane, who had a very productive first half defensively, recovered the football. There he is, number 37. El Camino's going to have to do more of that. Stop Stanley, the terrific running back, and somehow try to muster up an offense. Uh, Elko has not scored a lot of points this year, and they're going to somehow have to try to find a way to get in the end zone against that very tough football team from Granada Hills. Temperature is dipped to 59 degrees in Granada Hills. But the wind has died down, so it's a little bit more comfortable. We're sitting outside tonight. Join the football in the West San Fernando Valley. Next Friday, Granada Hills will be at Taft. ECR will have their senior night. It's senior night here for Granada, but next week, ECR will have its senior night when they host Cleveland. Speaking of seniors, there's a number of seniors that are playing their last game for Granada Hills, and we want to pay them a little bit of a tribute. There they are. Adaduro, Kyle Chano, Eric Chai, Marcus Escarton, Giovanni Korn, and Gianni Rodriguez. This is their senior night. We just wanted to give them a little bit of a bow on their last night. Especially, yes. I mean, last last night at home, it's not their normal senior night, obviously, with no fans, but it's still a cherished moment of being some in this program for four years. Of course, Adaduro, one of the stars of the football team. But you can see by that graphic, there's only a few seniors on the team. That tells you Granada Hills is going to be strong again when the fall comes around. And we know El Camino Real has a very, very young football team as well. Both teams are very young. It's bright futures for them, especially very few seniors leaving. They, they could be good for the next two, two years, two, next year and even two years. That's one of the good things about playing this football in the spring. Uh, you're going to iron out the kinks. You'll improve, and by the fall, you should be much better. Ace has got it teed up. Ace of Johnson, and we're about to begin the second half. 
here at John Elway Stadium. El Camino Royale football this year on LA 36. Cooper Brown will return. Runs into a stone wall and is bent back. That's good coverage by ECR. Well, we'll see the offense of Granada Hills. Remember, they won the opening kickoff. They had the opportunity. They won the toss, and they elected to defer, and that's why they have the ball to begin here in the third quarter. Uh, Hills, a 32-20 win on the field against Cleveland, and they lost when they had the forfeit, so they had to drop that W from their schedule. And then Birmingham came and beat this team 28-16, but the Patriots are the defending city champions. Adaduro busting tackles and coming to the near side, and Sam is on his way. Sam Adaduro is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Granada Hills. What a way to start the half for Granada Hills. Just like, like the first, first half. half. Yeah, identical. So Adaduro scores for the first time, doing exactly what Dejon Stanley did in the first half. Different player, same result. I like the fact that he went into the middle of the line and went right through all those would-be tacklers, and there was an opportunity to get to him, but he broke some tackles, and then once he pounced to the outside, it was all over. And again, they only go for two. That's their strategy. They come back the other way, and running in is Stanley. So that's a, a reversal, exactly the opposite in the first half. The first touchdown, the touchdown went to Stanley, and Adaduro got the two. Here it's Adaduro with the long touchdown run, and Stanley with the two-point conversion, building the lead to 28-3. to three. What a potent running game these Highlanders have. Definitely. Two. It's a two-headed monster in the backfield. E either one. They, they could go, and they've shown it so far. You know, it's funny. You come in here and you talk about Highlander football with the, the staff here at Granada Hills, and uh, you talk about the football team, and they, that's all they talk about is one and five. You, they, they just say, look for one and five, Stanley and Adaduro, and we've seen that here tonight. See Bucky Brooks in the background applauding his team. Has to be thrilled with the position they're in right now. Bucky in his second year, first year, they went to the playoffs and lost a heartbreaking game to lock on this field 21 to 20. Fair catch taken on that far sideline. Astorga with the fair catch. Let's go back to the touchdown run of Sam Adaduro. Adaduro, very hard runner to tackle, and especially with those great blockers working ahead of him, breaking a tackle right there. Could have went back to the line, and just as soon as he broke that one, just found some opening, and he was gone. being escorted downfield by Dejan Stanley. So the offense of El Camino comes back out. Weinberg has gone the distance at quarterback. As Sikowski and Montag wide to the left, Diaz deployed to the right. By the middle. Some hard running. Looks like Hassan carried the football, number 24. And it was. Marcelo Hassan, he is a running back, but we've seen him mostly a linebacker this year. I mean, he could he, he can do it both sides, as he's shown there. A very powerful runner. Low center of gravity as shown on the replay here. Just keeps going after contact. He digs contact as a linebacker, so he just runs through it. Look who's tackling him. Dejon Stanley. <laughs> Both sides of the ball. Yeah, that's what you love about city football. The numbers are not great. Not a lot of players on the sidelines. Most of them. Now, Granada has more than most. They have over 50 young men. But most of the players in the city section play both sides of the ball. Hassan again, and this time they're waiting for him. 
Good to get a fresh back in there as, as Hassan has the fresh legs, even though he did play defense in the first half. Third down, a short five. <laughs> El Camino Royal football on LA 36. Thrilled they're with us. We'll have their senior night next week against Cleveland at El Camino Football Stadium. Third down play. Hassan again on the draw, and they're waiting for him. Boy, that did not fool Granada Hills at all. Giovanni Korn disrupted the play, and a flag is out. <laughs> Holding offense. Penalty is declined, fourth down. So it's going to be a quick three and out for Elko. Asa Johnson will be punting it away to the dangerous and elusive Dejan Stanley. Stanley does everything. Turns all the kicks, plays defense as we just witnessed, and obviously offensively he's dynamic. They kick it away from him, and Ace has done a great job tonight. He's had a wonderful game, the field goal, and a couple beautiful punts. He's, he's definitely showing why why he's, he's such a great punter for this team. They, great, great special teams kicker, punter. He, he does it. He does it. Ace Johnson, only a sophomore. As a freshman, he was up on the varsity for the playoffs, so he got some experience there. And over the next couple of years, will be... Phenomenal kicker for ECR. The old position hasn't mattered even when Granada Hills has been backed up. They've had the big play. And they pitch it back. And here comes Stanley. And there goes Stanley. He's on his way again. This will be touchdown number four for Day John Stanley. He looks even faster in the second half. That, that a halftime break has definitely refreshed his legs. As shown, he, he was zooming down the field there. No one even in the vicinity. Now he's closing in on 300 yards tonight. What a night for Stanley. What a night for Granada Hills on senior night. 34-3, to three, they lead. And again, they will go for two. Michael Hernandez, the junior quarterback. You love his role here. He doesn't do much, but he's bought in. He never makes any mistakes. He's clean with the football. Young quarterback. And he hands it off to Adaduro going back the other way. That's nicely done. And two more for the Highlander. It's very deceptive offense. Very is deceptive offense. And especially when you have such great blockers as Granada Hills does. does. They're, they're getting downfield. They're getting downfield and picking up blocks, especially on this on this touchdown, able to work and push push the defense back. And Stanley, plus with some moves and broken tackles, he's hard to tackle as shown there. And when he's open field, uh, you're not catching. Great blocking at the point of attack by the Highlanders. That offensive line has done a nice job all season long, and they've been very good again tonight. A big advantage for Stanley. And Granada Hills charter. This is an impressive looking Highlander football team. Zakowski on that far sideline watches it bounce out of bounds. And a flag comes out. Let's see if free kick out of bounds. Feinberg free and company. Can manufacture a drive. Clear night again. It's 59 degrees, but the wind has stopped, so it's not too bad. 
ideal playing conditions for these football players from El Camino and Granada. Start from the 35-yard line after the ball was kicked out of bounds. Stanley on defense again, number one. It's just amazing the, the energy that he plays with. Still better than nine minutes to play in the third quarter. And the running game has been shut down in recent moments by Granada Hills. No chance there. Running with the football was House Swain. House Swain couldn't get any yardage, but Stanley did. As you see, the, the referee was in a little bit of a tizzy right there trying to get out of the way of Stanley and make sure he doesn't get run over by him <laughs> as he takes it to the house there. Brandon Sampson did a nice job, though, the back judge running down the field with him. Here's Feinberg throwing into the flat. And there's Montag with a burst. He saw his speed for the first time tonight. Finally shut down by Cooper Brown. Granada has done a good job of shutting down Ben Montag. We haven't heard his name that often, and they've, they've, they've been covering him. They've been double teaming him. They've been doing all, of the, all they can to not get him, let him get the ball, and it's proven here as Granada has a big lead, and the El Camino offense is just stagnant so far. Marcelo Hassan has come back in, number 24, as a running back. Trying to energize this Elko offense. Just want to try to get better. It's improbable that they've come all the way back to upset the Highlanders at this juncture, but you just want to put a drive together. Hassan running, and he's blasted at the point of attack. He was hit hard. Giovanni Korn, number eight, got that shoulder in on him. Great work by the defense, especially Korn coming in there and making sure there's no broken tackles there and shutting it down and sets up a fourth down here for El Camino. Korn's a hitter in that secondary. Showed it again. Wrapped up there as Korn makes sure that there's no broken tackles and he comes in to make sure and he drops him here. Fourth down play for ECR. Fourth and two. Feinberg lined up in the shotgun. See if they snap the ball or try to draw Granada off sides. They do snap it. There's the throw to Montag, and Montag has the first down. He's to the 42-yard line of Granada Hills. So a fourth down conversion. And Elko keeps the drive going. Good job by Feinberg to stay composed in that pocket. It was kind of collapsing a little bit. He's able to get it off to Montag for that first down. And they're getting the ball to Montag on this drive. Yes, I mean, they haven't done that all in the second half. But here they were able to get it to him on a slant route over the middle. And he's catches it and makes sure he gets that first and makes sure he doesn't fumble that. Running play. Hassan to the 39-yard line. Herrera came up and stopped him. You hear the cheerleaders on the other side. There are the cheerleaders here for Granada Hills, and that's always great to see. It's always great to see. They weren't they weren't originally allowed to be here, and after all their protests, they're finally able to get back on the back out and uh, cheer for their team on the sideline. They look cold though, don't they? A little bit. <laughs> Chilly. Chilly. Second down and seven. Hassan again, following a Gane block, and he charges inside the 35 yard line. Great block in there by Gane, able to show off the lead block and pushing the defense back, and it sets up a first down. It is a first down. To the 33-yard line. See if Elko can punch one in here and get a score. 
They've had success on the ground between the 20s. They just haven't finished drives. Yeah, I mean, they, they've just been stalling out towards the towards the Granada territory, and that just shows that Granada Hills is tough to score on, and especially when they're when they're close to their own end zone. See Gunay lining up 88 as a blocking back. He can also catch it downfield. He's a mismatch. He's a big guy. Asan again lowering the shoulder, and he's down to the 25-yard line. El Camino proving that they could run it with anyone out there. Great, great work by the offensive line to create holes, and the running back runners are just finding holes and exposing the holes right there. Montalano with the stop, but not before. Substantial pickup of seven and a half yards. Clock moving. See, we're inside of four minutes with basically all runs to a few passes by El Camino Real. The clock has moved quickly. Hassan again, room to his right. Bounces outside. And finally hurled out of bounds. That was a great job re reading the reading the blocks up front and then able to kick it off to the outside and pick up a first down, fresh set of downs. El Camino Royale closing in on its first touchdown of the evening. There's the trigger man on this drive. Looks like he might be a little bit tired, might want to come out of the game. That's Marcelo Asan. When they tap on the helmet a lot, you'll see players come out, but for the moment he's staying in there. He's young, he can take it, right? Exactly, exactly. Energizing. He is one of the seniors, though, 5'8", 175-pound senior. Been used a lot on special teams. It's great to see him get this much action. He's come in and fortified the defense, and Marcelo's running the ball well. Elko's without Troy Spellman tonight. He's concentrating on baseball as the sign has stood up. Spellman had a nice game a week ago against Chatsworth. Yeah, he was he was one of the one of the sparks in there for El Camino. It's, it's, it's rough having him not here for El Camino, and they they they're really much missing him right now. 55 Kyle Chano with a good effort defensively for Granada. Very good effort here, able to get around a block and able to secure and make sure there's no more forward progress. Housian now has checked in as a running back, number 45, another sophomore. And he's got the ball, Brian Housian. Jason Zabala calls him his Rudy. He's uh, worked hard to move up the depth chart and get action. We do have a El Camino Real player down. It's Anderson Barrios, one of the offensive linemen. Great run right there. For First run of the game, and it's just proven El Camino that they could just slot in anyone. And with their offensive line, they're able to push forward and get get some good chunk yardage. Timeout on the field as they attend to Barrios with a minute 55 left in the third quarter. Granada Hills with a very comfortable lead, 36 to three. But this has been a great drive. This has been a great drive. It's, it's very similar to their first drive, even though they got no points out of it. But they're, they're marching their way downfield, and especially towards the goal line, they're able to work their way through here. First time in, uh, first time in the goal sign situation. El Camino Royale has been averaging 12 a game this season. There's our goal post cam. Unfortunately, they've given up 37.2 a game, and Granada Hills is uh, right on target already with the 36 up on the board. El Camino has scored 51 points this season. We'll step out. We'll be back in a moment. Who shouldn't be driving? Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Oh, 
Still attending to Anderson Barrios, the junior. One of the captains. He also plays nose guard. It's good to see Anderson finally getting up and with assistance standing up. Uh, that's a good sign. Hopefully he'll be okay. Junior player at 5'7 and 260 pounds. Although he is needing assistance. He's struggling to get off the field and don't like that. He's hobbled. It is a grueling game. There's no question about it. We all know it's a contact sport. And it's, it's difficult. And you just really feel bad for Anderson, who has gone back down again. He just cannot put any weight on that leg. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. Let's see if they use that cart that's out there now to help him off the field. Yeah, they have a golfing cart, and he's going to be assisted off the field. We'll step out. 36-3. We'll resume play in a moment. Hmm. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Barrios is out. They took him off with the golf cart. Reaching down to his left leg. He's right below us as we go back to action. Feinberg rolling to his left. He has three rushing touchdowns this year. He's elusive, but he just can't break that last tackle as he darted back the other way. He was taken down. A good tackle in the open field by Kyle Chano. Not a lot you could do there if you're Feinberg. A lot of green shirts around you. He tried his best right there. He broke, broke a couple tackles, but not enough as he uh, takes a sack. One thing you like about Feinberg is his competitive fire. Young quarterback, a junior, so he's going to be back in the fall to pilot ECR. All resting between the 14 and 13-yard line of Granada Hills. Islanders looking to get a defensive stop and take the ball away from Elko. Stoppage in play. Timeout taken for the moment. It didn't signal it, but I think it was ECR that took the timeout with 43 seconds. Now they drop it down to 42 seconds left in the half. In a 36-3 game, and I guess the intrigue here is uh, well, Elko score Luke Slater. This is their best chance. This is their best chance, and they're and they're trying to trying to get six out of their best chance. First time in a goal in a goal situation, and they're they're trying to they're trying to punch it in here, here on fourth down. Fourth down play. The son of the backfield. Feinberg, let's see if he can get one into the end zone here with Sikowski in motion. Throwing downfield, it's caught. Beautiful effort. Touchdown, Ben Montag. Great toss there by Feinberg and Montag with that nice corner out, able to get separation, and is, as soon as he catches it, it's, it's an easy six for him. Had to love there. They were on the same page. Feinberg threw it before Montag took his break. Beautiful touchdown. And Welcome to Oil has its first TD of the night. So within 36-9. Again, they're not going to win the football game. 
but uh, you like the fact that they just put together a wonderful drive. It's definitely something they take out of that. With this drive, definitely something they take out of this game. Go for two, try to get their total to 11. Feinberg on the roll. Throwing, it's caught. Ramadan made the grab, and he's in for the two. They discussed it for a moment, but they're saying he got in. So give ECR two more. Ramadan with the catch. Feinberg building some confidence, and that was quite a drive. Yeah, good job by Ramadan on that two-point conversion, reading zone coverage and just finding the finding the soft point and just planting himself there and getting himself open and getting the two-point conversion right there. Well, you like the balance on that drive, running and passing the ball for Elko. Feinberg showing that he could throw the ball. Very good good this drive. Uh, he, he threw one for a touchdown, and plus his backs are picking up some great yardage early on in the drive. That touchdown to Montag might have been one of the better passes this year by Ryan Feinberg. He was on the money with this pass, just anticipating where Ben Montag would be. Feinberg pre predetermined it, and he knew he was going to Montag. They're, 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 he's their guy, and he knew he knew that route. As soon as he knew the break, he just he flew right to the end zone right there. Gets him within 25 after the two-point conversion. But really something to build on as they look forward to playing Cleveland next week on our air. It'll be senior night in Woodland Hill. Waiting moments of the third quarter. Luke Slater, I'm Randy Rosenwald. Thrilled you're with us for El Camino Royale football this year on LA 36. Johnson again showcasing that leg, kicking it into the end zone. Boy, he hammered that one over the head of Cooper Brown. This is the best ace has looked all year. Yeah, he, he has that potential and he's really showing it so far today. Good field goal and that kickoff was just boomed right down the field. Two beautiful punts as well. But, the big but in the game, can they slow down the running assault of Granada Hills Charter. It's been fun to watch the Highlanders operate out of that wing T formation. Here's Adaduro, and he has operating room. High stepping as he goes. This is quite a one two punch in Adaduro and Stanley. Definitely. Both hard to stop and you, you just have to pick one and pick one and stop it every play. Stanley's a great running back as we take a look at Adaduro running between the tackles. Uh, when you talk about great running backs in the city, you got to start with Jacob Galloway of Banning. There is a marker out. Galloway is a load for the Pilots. Yards from the end of the run, first down. So the Highlanders will improve on their field position. Takes it out to the 44-yard line. There will not be another play here in the third quarter. So through three, it's Granada Hills 36, El Camino Real 11 on LA 36. One more quarter to go. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. I could change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Low 
Finley up on the top, isn't it, here? On a cold night in Granada Hills where the Highlanders are leading big. About to start their drive from the 44-yard line as we begin the fourth quarter. With Luke Slater, I'm Randy Rosenbaum, and here's Stanley again. Giving some ground, now turning it upfield with that sudden burst. He is explosive. Very explosive runner, also a great low center of gravity, able to break some tackles. Not shown there, but it's shown throughout the game he's able to break some tackles. Had to give some ground, but he's still able to turn it upfield and get his first down. Yeah, great, uh, great running right there, able to read the sideline, able to cut upfield and pick up a first down. Pick up of 13 yards. Back the other way. Sam added Duro, and he has a first down. It's just pick your poison with Granada Hills. It's either you're getting Stanley or Adadura, and they've, they've proven it all game. And they're, they're, they're both great runners, and they've, it's been on display all day. Ball resting just outside the 30-yard line of El Camino Real. Ball's on the ground. Hernandez never got it cleanly. It's one of the rare times he has made a mistake. Does Elko have it? They do. It's that man again. He's been all over the football field tonight for ECR. Jacob Zane. Great, great job of Elko defense picking up their second turnover. Both times recovered by Zane. As you see here, just just not not recut, not a. Uh, picked up properly by Hernandez and it just on the ground and it's whoever wants it and Zane wants it. Yeah, he has that proverbial nose for the football. Jacob Zane, two fumble recoveries for El Camino Real. See if they can get another touchdown on the board. Offense has got to have a little bit more confidence after that last drive. Definitely. They, they, they marched down marched down the field on a defense who they've been stopped so far. And uh, they they got to take that momentum on the fumble and also score. Good defense by the Highlanders. That hole was just stuffed before he was able to get there. That's all it was. Good, good blitz run there right there by Granada. Chano 55 again, making his presence felt. Near side to Montag, who stumbles, and then he runs into Stanley. Stanley getting it done on both sides of the ball, picking up that tackle. Yeah, he's an impressive player. Especially here. It was a good good, good design here by uh, El Camino. It's just uh, the toss was a little high, and Montag was a little stumble, and Stan was able to take it to the ground. It was impressive what Stanley did there. was able to fight off the block of Sikowski and still make the play. Third down, 13. Feinberg running for his life. Throws it away. Looks like a grounding call against Feinberg. They had Ariano in the backfield, but Feinberg elected to throw the ball, and then he had to throw it away. They're going to wave off the flag. He was outside the tackle box. I thought he got out. I, I thought the real problem was with if he got it past the line of scrimmage, which, which he did. So they pick up the flag. The officials realize you are allowed to throw it outside the pocket like that. Another high snap. There's no outside the pocket. And this time Asa Johnson 
Just kicks it through. It is a safety. So that'll put two more on the board. Uh, builds the total to 38-11. The ball was illegally kicked in the end zone. The penalties declined. The result of the play is a safety. It's been an issue for ECR most of the season. That snaps like that against Agura. Yeah, that's that, That's where it all started. They've, they've been getting a little better throughout the year. I think it's just a little blip by their long snapper right there. Of course, with the safety, it's two points. And El Camino will now punt it back or kick it off. They elect to kick it off to Granada Hills and Stanley. And we scored four touchdowns tonight. Right around 300 yards rushing. He has been brilliant. Adaduro has another long run for Granada Hills. The touchdown for ECR was a beautiful pass from Feinberg to Montag. Taken by one of the up men, and he's tackled, and that's a flag. He did call for the fair catch, and Ramadan slammed him down, and you can't do that. After the play was over, interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. No one was obvious. <laughs> I think that's a great explanation by Bill Agopian, our lead official. You just can't whack the guy like that. You just can't do that. <laughs> Simple as that. Whacking the guy is not a good idea. That takes it down to the Elko 29-yard line. just can't whack the guy. <laughs> hey, Bill keeps us in the game down there. He's on that microphone, the lead official. Has this one under control, as do the Highlanders, leading by 38 to 11. Under 10 minutes to play. The mean green. Coach Bucky Brooks in the Dark sweats over there with that face mask and glasses. Goes in to that team huddle, encouraging his young men on. And he believes that this is a, a real opportunity at Granada Hills to have a program of prominence. And he thinks he can build it to be one of the great programs in Southern California. And Jason Zabonk believes the same thing at El Camino Real. So perhaps in years to come, these could be two titanic teams in the city section. Chi running to his right. Eric Chi, junior running back, 5'10 and 170 pounds. Substitutions coming in. You can see some of the players a little out of sorts, out of kilter. Getting some extra bodies in there, giving some kids some opportunities to play. Michael Hernandez has gone the distance, the junior quarterback. Really bought into this offense, emerging as a leader for the Highlanders. Counter play, right up the middle. This is going to go for another touchdown to Cooper Brown. Cooper Brown, first touch of the game, they're they're getting in their uh, their their backups here for Granada Hills, and they're proving even their backups can can rush the ball down the field. Yeah, Cooper's been on the specialty unit; he's been in the ball game, but that's the first time he's touched it from scrimmage, and he takes it in. Six rushing touchdowns for Granada Hills in this game, and of course, like always, they go for two. Those wings out. 
extended. Again, it's a very difficult offense to slow down, and it's an easy conversion for Chi. Just walked in with exactly nine minutes left in the ball game. That builds the total to 46 to 11. Good run for, from uh, Cooper Brown right there, able to read a hole. And as soon as he read the hole, he, he saw open field, and he just went with it. And it's an easy six right there for Cooper Brown. Looks like they're cloning running backs. They all look the same. They all break tackles. They all have long strides, and they all get to the end zone at Granada Hill. Once again, the Highlanders to kick off. Tough night for Elko on the road against a very good Granada Hills team. Again, they're ranked sixth in the city poll. Number one team is Birmingham out of the same West Valley League. Birmingham's two and two, but they lost to some southern section schools. So this is not an easy conference to play in. Aston's to kick off. Been kicking it short tonight, not allowing ECR to return. There is again short to the near side. And this one is being returned for El Camino Royale. Jackson Forte. this game under control, but we did see El Camino establish a drive, get a touchdown. They've had some moments offensively tonight. Yeah, that drive where they got where they ended up getting six points, that's definitely something uh, Sabalik would, would definitely take, take away from this game as a positive, especially their offense coming through and putting up six points against a, against a very good defense who's been shutting them down. Well, the biggest trouble spot was they knew coming in, could they slow down Dejon Stanley, they haven't been able to do that, and they haven't been able to stop the offense, that running assault of Granada Hills. Feinberg slings that one. Gene can't hold it. We are now playing with a running clock with a 35-point lead for Granada Hills in the fourth quarter. So even though it's an incompleted pass, the clock is running. Feinberg rolling out. Pretty good pass. It's just a drop by Gane. He's been losed as a blocker. It's the first time he's been, been targeted so far. So we are utilizing the running clock in the fourth quarter. Now Sian couldn't find a crease. Well, next week, Granada Hills will be a heavy favorite at Taft. Tory Doors are rebuilding their program, and Granada Hills figures to win that game. El Camino Real on senior night has a great chance against Cleveland. That's going to be a good ball game. Definitely a great ball game. Very evenly matched right there. It's going to be a close game. That is a winnable ball game. So we'll be on hand. LA 36 will have El Camino Real football again next week when the Cavaliers come to Woodland Hills. It's not too far. They're coming from Reseda. Feinberg slinging it deep for Montag. It's picked off. So the interception for the Highlanders, D.J. Richmond, the sophomore. Montag merely made the catch, juggled it, and Richmond picked it off. He just couldn't complete the juggling act right there, and because he tipped the ball up, he set up, he's, he set up uh, the interception possibility, and they were able to go with it. Good, 
Good job rolling here by Feinberg and throwing it deep. A pretty all right pass, but it was just juggled and tipped up in the air and caught for an interception. Richmond at the right spot at the right time. Islanders take over at their 47-yard line. And with the backups in, the ball's on the ground, and it is Richmond who made the interception playing some offense now, and he dropped it, but wisely pounced on the football. Yep, ball on the ground, you got to pounce on it. Inside of four minutes left, and you can see this one is uh, rapidly expiring at John Elway Stadium. Again, we want to thank Ryan Gilder for his expertise in the first half, and Luke Slater alongside here in the back half. Another low snap, and this one will be covered. Again, this is an opportunity for some young guys to get in there and play. Jacob Yakapin is the one that had to recover it there for the Highlanders. But again, it's the experience of varsity football and an opportunity to play in a West Valley League game for many of these young men. Three minutes left. Running that wing offense, that pitch back and beautiful run by Kanye Martin. And he's got some support on the sideline. I appreciate Martin's effort. Now you can do it with anyone, especially those lead blockers working really hard out there and help getting their, help getting their back up some, some good chunk yards right there with Martin. Yeah, a lot of these guys probably didn't think they are going to play tonight, but with the lopsided nature of the game, 46 to 11, the backups are getting that great opportunity. Millen running it, Niall Millen. Boy, they're sharing the rock on this drive. Everybody's getting involved. That's what happens when you got great blockers up ahead. Everyone can touch the ball. Here, working, working to the outside. Blocker's able to push the line forward, and he picks up a, a solid gain. Good block up front from Jacob Meyer. And Bucky Brooks was quick to point out that the offensive line has done some good work this year here at Granada Hills. And again, it's Martin running the football. Ball came out late. El Camino has it. If they give him the recovery, it would be their third of the night. Here the toss to Martin, running it, running it between the tackles here, and just, just. He was rolled about. down when the ball came out, so it is not a turnover was ruled down. Well, now huh. they're going to say, wait a minute, let's give it back to El Camino Real. <laughs> Someone's got to tell Granada Hills they think they're on <laughs> offense. So three turnovers by the defense. Again, working against some second and third teamers. But still, there's some enthusiasm and excitement on the El Camino Real side, and that's what you like to see. Yeah, it's definitely something you could take out of this game. Your defense forced Stanley to fumble and they picked up three turnovers. We which, may not see another play unless El Camino Real hurries because the clock is down to 35 seconds left. Again, it's a running clock at 46 to 11. They need to snap it. Maybe get one more play off. Final 20 ticks. Diaz has the catch. And he's outside the 40-yard line. Well, Camino Real is going to take a timeout here so they can get another play. It's the only way you can stop it with the running clock is with the timeout. Especially after Feinberg just made. Feinberg making a good toss right there. Forces the timeout right there. Very poised back there. And finds, a, finds the slant open. Finds the slant open for a first down. Is another sophomore product making that catch. Go, 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 go. 
So we'll get these kids in the weight room in the off season after next week. Jason Zabalik's going to take a couple week break with his guys and get them back in the weight room, build them up, and they should uh, have some uh, better efforts in the fall. One would think they'll grow from what they've learned in the spring. But tonight it's been Granada Hills by 46-11. Feinberg has that one caught by Montag, still battling across the 50. Goes inside the 45-yard line. El Camino's going to take another timeout. Just a couple seconds left. They really want to try to get one in there to improve that offense. And, and there has been some good work done by the offense in the second half. Especially Montag on that play, still fighting for every yard that he gets. They wore out a timeout, so they couldn't stop the clock, and time has expired. And Granada Hills has won this football game 46-11. to so congratulations to the Highlanders. They are 2-1 and one on the field, but they did have to forfeit the win against Cleveland. So officially they're 1-2, and two, but in their hearts they know they've won 2 out of 3. Unfortunately for ECR, they fall to 0-5, and, and the two teams salute one another, which is wonderful to see. Great sportsmanship. I would imagine a lot of these guys know each other. Yeah, especially, especially coming, most of them maybe playing at the same uh, same uh, little league for football. So congratulations to Bucky Brooks and his Granada Hills Highlander football team. Jason Zabalk's team did perform, certainly offensively, a lot better in the second half. So a great effort by the Highlanders, especially offensively. And you got to start with Dejan Stanley. Pause here for, for a second to put the mask back on. Excuse me. I'm not as swift with uh, putting these masks on. You got to take the headsets off and leave the mask on. And, but now we have the headset and the mask back in proper order. And Granada Hill says 146 to 11. Randy Roseland, this is Luke Slater. And again, we want to thank Ryan Gilder for his work early on. And we look at these highlights, Luke, and really it's the, it's the running show of what Granada Hills was able to do with those wingbacks having great nights. Uh, Deshaun Stanley was unbelievable. Yeah, especially run, running close to 300 yards. He, he just ran right through that El Camino defense. Four touchdowns as well. Have a great night from there. Yeah, he had a number of long bursts for scores. Adaduro had a long touchdown run. And all in all, you, you can't, uh, you know, say much negativity toward this uh, Granada Hills team. They were terrific. Uh, defensively, they bent a little bit. El Camino Real moved the football, but they were only able to put 11 points up on the board. So give the Highlanders credit for stopping them when they had to do it. Especially the defense. Defense stepped up for most of the game, but if you're El Camino, you you, you put up a you put up a good touchdown against a good defense right there. Yeah, and you do like the fact that, that the running game had some moments. Uh, Asan ran the ball effectively. Uh, you like the game that Feinberg had in the second half, being able to get the ball down the field to Ben Montag for a touchdown. Definitely, Montag was very quiet in that first half, and especially when they when they got him going, he it, it, he powered the offense. We look ahead to next week, and it'll be against Cleveland for El Camino Real at home. It'll be senior night. That should be fun for the seniors. As for Granada Hills, they'll travel uh, to Taft High School, where they'll be a huge favorite. They should handle the Toreadors. But the El Camino game that we'll have for you against Cleveland could be a very entertaining affair. Definitely. They're, they're very evenly matched. Definitely very evenly matched. Expect a very close game between Cleveland and El Camino next week. All those highlights. There's the Adaduro touchdown run. And he was splendid as well here at Granada Hills at John Elway Stadium. Granada Hills is a team that's, uh, you know, if you had the playoffs, they'd be a team that would be a factor. It's an offense you don't see a whole lot, and it's tough to defend. They're a very good football team, and the fact that they played Birmingham, who's the number one ranked team, to a 12-point game just shows you how strong this Granada Hills team is. But I think there are some room for optimism on the El Camino side, the way they played 
in the second half, especially offensively. They're going to have to shut down the ground game of Cleveland again next week. Luke Slater, a final thought. Final thought, just just take what take what your offense did in the second half into the Cleveland game. That, just use your momentum that you had. Defense came up with some good stops in the second half. Even though they were against backups, they came up with some good stops. Just take that into Cleveland game. All right, for Ryan Gilder and Luke Slater, I'm Randy Rosamond. The final score here at John Elway Stadium reads 46 to 11 for the Highlanders of Granada Hills. For our entire LA 36 crew, we'll talk to you next week when we have Cleveland against El Camino Real on El Camino Real football on LA 36. Good night, everybody.